Once again, good morning and good day to everyone. For this time, we're going to discuss the part two levels of organization. And first, we're going to start with the characteristics of life. Again, if you need the other uh, topics, you may click the link here. So here right now, we are on the characteristics of life. So start. So once we say biotic, these are living things. And we once we say abiotic, these are non-living things. So all of the non-living, for example, the air, the rocks, the soil, those are all abiotic factors. Now, for us to classify if it is if if an organism or if a thing has a life, it must have these um, seven common properties. First, we have this organization. And then number two, homeostasis. Number three, we have metabolism. Number four, responsiveness. Number five, we have this reproduction. Number six, <laughs> we have this heredity. And number seven, growth and development. So it grow, the organism growth and develops. Okay, so those are the seven characteristics of life. So let's just discuss some common terminologies that is important in biology. <clears throat> so once we say first organization, organisms are made up of, it could be unicellular or composed of many cells. It could be multicellular. A cell is a tiny <clears throat> organized structure that is, that is surrounded by a thin covering called a membrane. And a cell is the small unit that can perform all life functions. Now, with regards to level of organization, of course, uh, the most simplest would be the cells. At the parts of the cell, we have these organelles. Take note, the term organelles is different from organ. So we have from organelles, group of organelles that is living, composed of cells. The cells are going to be tissues. After tissues, it will going to have organ. And from organ, we're going to have the organ system. And then an organ, organ system, uh, we have an organism. And then we also have the population, the community, ecosystem, biome, and the biosphere. So what are the difference of this? First, we have the organelles. An example for that would be mitochondria, ribosomes, Golgi bodies. So those are all examples of organelles. For cells, example for that would be the liver cell or hepatocytes. We also have the dermatocytes. So Sperm cell, egg cell, so those are all examples of cells. As we say tissue, these are a group of cells that can perform a specific function. For example, we have also the dermal tissue. Okay, we also have the lining of the stomach. So that's also a tissue. <clears throat> and organ, and a group of tissue is called an organ. And one good example for that would be our stomach, our heart, or the blood. The blood itself is an organ. And a skin is also an organ. So after that, uh, we also have the organ system. For example, we have the skeletal system, integumentary system, nervous system. Next, for an organism, example for that would be human. And then this time, we specify what is a population. Once we say a population, it is a group of humans. But in fact, once we say it's not just a group of humans, but once we say of population, so this must be group of orga organism. And for us to classify that, organism must belong on the same species. Okay, for us to count that. We, we, for example, we want to count the population of dogs. Well, we, should just, we, should, we should just count the dogs, the population of dogs and not the cats. Okay, so again, a population is a group of organism that belong to the same species. So we also have the community. Once we say community, that is in the interacting group of body species in a common location. For example, the trees and animals in the La Mesa forest. So we talk about the community of all the living things. But once we say ecosystem, ecosystem is the biotic and the abiotic factors. Meaning to say the living and plus the non-living parts. And then a group of ecosystem could have a biome. And the biome it's a large geographical area with a specific climate, vegetation, and animal life. So recall that uh, there are five major types of biome, although we're going to still discuss this on some 
on some other part, but the biomes it can be aquatic, grassland, forest, desert, tundra. <laughs> okay? And though some of these biomes can be further divided into other categories, such as freshwater, marine, savanna, tropical rainforest, temperate rainforest, and taiga. By the way, Philippines is in tropical. Okay? Philippines is a tropical country. Next, we also have biosphere. A biosphere includes all life on our planet it's not only the things that we are living but also the remains of the organisms that have died and not yet decompose it also includes the regions of other part of the system such as the atmosphere hydrosphere and the geosphere occupied by the living organism so next property we have the homeostasis it is the process that keeps organisms stable even when the environment change example we have our perspiration okay or, or, for example, we have the dilation of our blood vessels or to adapt in the change in our weather. Next, we also have the metabolism. And metabolism, once we say metabolism, it is a process of chemical reaction in order to process energy, in order to grow, move, or process information. Once we say metabolism, it is the sum of all the chemical reaction in the body. By the way, there are two important temp terminologies that you need to know. We have the anabolism and catabolism. Anab anabolism is the building up of complex molecules from simple molecules. So from, from uh, very simple molecules, if you're going to uh, add them together and build them up, that is anabolism. Well, catabolism, that is the breaking down of complex molecules, the simple one. Okay? So next, we have responsiveness. For us to classify that is a living organism, it must react to a stimuli. So once we say a stimuli, so uh, a, uh, a stimulus is anything that causes some reaction by the organism. Okay? So we usually have this tropism terminology. Entropism is the response or orientation of a plant or a certain globe or animals to a stimulus that acts with greater intensity from one direction to another than the other. It may be achieved by active movement or structural alteration. So we have these different uh, terminologies that we might encounter. We have this phototropism just like this. It is the response of light. The plant bends. Uh, towards the source of the light. We have the geotropism, response to gravity, chemotropism, response to substance. Okay, we have also the hydrotropism, response to water. Pigmotropism is response to mechanical stimulation. For example, you touch the makaheya and the makaheya plant will gonna fold. So we also have the traumatropism, response to wound lesion, and we also have this galvanotropism, response to electric current. Or electropism. Electrotropism. Next <clears throat> terminology that we need to know is the process of this reproduction. So uh, an organism must reproduce. Okay. And this is the process by which organisms make more of their own kind of species. So by the way, once we say uh, it is of the same species, a species is a group of animals that can breed with one another and produce a fertile offspring. So if they can produce a fertile offspring, okay, so if, for example, two organisms can produce a fertile offspring, then therefore they belong to the same species. So asexual reproduction, there are two types of reproduction. We have the asexual as well as the sexual reproduction. Okay, so sometimes our questions that ask for these terminologies. So what is this uh, types of asexual reproduction? First, we have the budding. Okay? Budding, an outgrowth called a bud, forms the body of an organism and develops into a new individual that is identical to the parent. Okay? You can just read this. So we, uh, we have this binary fission. We also have this uh, by, uh, by, uh, binary fission, fragmentation, Parthogenesis, okay, you can just read this part, okay, so parthogenesis, what is this parthogenesis? Off offspring are produced without the embryo being fertilized by a male, so many insects can produce parthogenetically. We also have this vegetative propagation, 
Okay, so example for that would be the potato tubers, sunners, stolon, onion bulbs, and we also have the sporogenesis. Sporogenesis, during unfavorable condition, the organ organism develops develops sac like create uh, structures called sporangium that contain spores. Okay, so when the conditions are favorable, the sporangium bursts open and spores are released to germinate to give the rise to new organism. So these are the methods of asexual reproduction. Now, um, again, these are the asexual reproduction types. In terms of regeneration, we also have this regeneration, for example, the planaria. If they are cut, then they can regenerate into other bodies. We also have these different types of uh, vegetative propagation. We have the uh, rhizome from its adventitious roots. And then we also have the uh, tuber from potato. We also have these runners. Okay. So this is a runner. Okay. So we also have the bryophyllum where in the leaves have their, uh, the leaves, of course, can also produce another uh, reproduce okay another type of its species another another uh, kind of its species okay so if you look at the parthogenesis versus sexual reproduction so once we say parthogenesis they don't have this uh they don't have this uh sexual intercourse so there's no uh there's no two parent there's only one for example we have this diploid female b and then there's no fertilization, and then they could produce bees even though without uh, male. Okay, how about for sexual reproduction? There must be a female, and then the male, and then they could produce now this, uh, these they could produce organisms. So that's a difference between parthogenesis versus sexual reproduction. Now, how about uh, sexual reproduction? So when two parents contribute genetic information to produce unique offspring. So what are these? We have the types of sexual reproduction. Um, we have two types of sexual reproduction. We have this conjugation and syngamy. Conjugation is a type of sexual reproduction process where two individuals temporarily fuse and exchange their genetic materials through their nuclei. It can be seen in the bacteria, protozoa, algae. So they just exchange, uh, they just exchange uh, genetic material with each other. So a conjugation, uh, can of course diversify the genetic composition of a certain, uh, for example, bacteria. And once we say syngamy, uh, syngamy is the process of complete and permanent fusion of haploid male and female gametes to form a diploid zygote. For example, as humans, through copulation, we have this syngamy. Now, once we say there are two types of syngamy, we have this exogamy and then endogamy. Exogamy or the allogamy, the male parent produces sperm while the female parent produces the ovum. And so the two gametes produced by different uh, by different individuals, they fuse is in the fertilization process, and these individuals is called as dioecious. Now, once we say endogamy, male and female gametes are produced by a single individual to fuse to form a zygote, meaning to say they still gonna produce their uh, gametes, male and female gametes, and then they will gonna uh they will gonna have it uh, fertilized in their own body. So one good example for that, of course, so you call that as the hermaphrodites, no? So we call that as the monoecious. <clears throat> so next property is heredity. We're gonna set we're gonna have a separate uh separate discussion on this heredity. When an organism reproduces, it passes genetic uh information. So inherited characteristics change over generation. The process is called evolution, that is the process of change by new species developed from pre-existing species over time. So, and again, we also have this growth and development. So, all living organisms uh, grow, it results in an increase in mass, okay? So, there are several components for an organism to grow. We have this transport. That's why later we're going to uh, have this terminology transport system, passive and active transport system. We also have the respiration. So you might want to visit the anaerobic and aerobic respirations. Excretion. 
removal of waste products within organism as a result of metabolic activities. For example, like as humans, we do uh, produce our poop or we urinate. We also have the synthesis includes the chemical activities by which an organism builds large molecules from smaller ones. And of course, we have the nutrition. These activities by which an organism obtains materials from its environment and prepare, prepare for its use. There are some terminologies that you need to take note. We have the ingestion or taking in food, digestion, the breakdown of food molecules, and ingestion is the removal of undigestible or indigestible food materials. Okay? And so let's go now with our example question. <clears throat> Outside of a whole cell, let's try to look at this. Outside of a whole cell, viruses do not use energy. They only become active when they come contact with a whole cell. Once activated, they use the whole cell's energy tool to make more viruses. Because they do not use their own energy, some scientists do not consider them alive. What makes a virus a non-living thing? Of course, virus reproduce. So this one is not heredity. I think they also pass uh, genetic information. Growth, a virus can grow, uh, but the answer here is metabolism. Since viruses do not produce their own energy for replication, they know that they do not have their own metabolism. Virus is a non-living thing. How about this number two? Which of the following is not a method your body automatically uses to regulate homeostasis? Okay. So is it A, shivering during cold weather, sweating during hot weather? I think this is a homeostasis, vein dilation and constriction. This is a form of also adjustment to the environment. Excretion of undigested food. This is not under homeostasis. Okay. Next, glycolysis, Krebs cycle, and electron transport chain in cells are all examples of which characteristics of life. Tropism, no. Metabolism is a process. Yes, of uh, having energy. So the answer here is letter B, metabolism. Organization and reproduction is not under the Krebs cycle, electron trans and electron transport chain. Next, how about number four? Sexual reproduction occurs in bacteria where they temporarily fuse and exchange their genetic material through pronuclei. What is this method of reproduction known for? Of course, this is sexual reproduction. In sexual reproduction, there's just conjugation or syndrome, but the answer here is conjugation. Next, number five, which of these is not a correct match for levels of organization? Golgi bodies, organelles. I think this one is correct. Blood organ, yes. Monkeys and dogs, population. This one is wrong. Tundra, we also have this biome. This is checked. Monkeys and dogs are not on the same population, right? So a boss is the population. Uh, a population is a group of organisms that belong to the same species. Okay? So, kindly answer this practice set one. And if you need a further discussion out of it, uh, you can access the next video. But you can try to post this. Uh, post the, uh, you can try to post the video and try to answer this practice set number one. It's only one to six, I think. Okay? So, that's all. Thank you for listening.